Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. There's nothing that we can bring to you that we amount to what you have done for us. The blessings, the grace, the privilege, the opportunity, the favor, the protection, so Lord. All we can say is thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, thank you. We bless you, Lord, for yet another Sunday in your presence. We thank you for what you're using this ministry to accomplish in your kingdom. We thank you for Philippine. We thank you for our Father in the Lord, Pastor Michael Dada. We thank you for our regional overseers here. We thank you for all the ministers in this region and be region beyond. We say glory be to your name, our Father. Glory be to your name, Lord God Almighty. And we pray, O oh Lord, our service in your presence will be acceptable in Jesus' name. Our service in your presence, O oh Lord, will not be in vain in Jesus' name. And we pray against every king of Persia, O oh Lord, that want to use every avenue to accuse us that our service, may, you know, will, will, will be meaningless before you. Such spirit, Lord, we bound them in Jesus' name. And we pray that the fire of the Lord will consume them in Jesus' name. And we pray a labor of your, your presence, O Lord, will be rewarded in heaven in Jesus' name. Thank you, everlasting King of glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Good morning, church. You can have a seat in his presence. Uh, today is another Sunday in the house of the Lord. If you are here in our midst today, fellowshipping with us for the first time, please do us the honor by raising up your hand or standing up so we can welcome you into the house of the Lord. Wow. What do we do, church? You are welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome in the Welcome our brothers and sisters, and we pray the Lord will establish, uh, establish you in, the king, in his kingdom in Jesus' name. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there's um, a microphone right by you there. Please, you can introduce yourself by saying your name. Thank you very much. My name is Samuel Sijuade. Whoa. You brought to um, uh, Brother Sijuade. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> You're welcome, Brother Samuel Shijuade. You're welcome to the praise of the Lord. The Lord will continue to keep you in his kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm Akambi Ademola Samuel. You're welcome, sir. Mr. Uh, Akambi, the Lord will be with you and establish you as well in Jesus' name. Amen. A sister. Good morning. My name is Shui Achu. Can you say that again, please? Can you say the name again, please? Shiri Achu. Shiri, Sister Shiri, welcome, yes. welcome, welcome to the presence of Thank the Lord. You. The Lord will be with you, with your family, in Jesus' name. And uh, the usher will be, oh, there's one more. Okay. Good morning, brethren. Good morning. My name is Mrs. Chika Osebwe. Wow, you're welcome, ma'am. You're welcome to the house of the Lord. The Lord will, uh, is, uh, be with you, guide you, and protect you, and uh, you will gain heaven at last in Jesus' name. We welcome you all for this beautiful Sunday, you know, in our presence, and uh, we pray that all your heart desires, Lord, we grant them in Jesus' name. 
Uh, the ushers will give you some uh, little package there. There will be a slip there. You can uh, fill them out, you know. The purpose of that is to, you know, for the church to reach out to you, to do follow-up with you. And uh, if there's any need, you know, prayer-wise, or, you know, like any needs, you can, you know, relate to whoever reached out to you. And I pray as you do so, the Lord will answer all your heart desires in Jesus' name. We can have a seat. Um, if you're there on Zoom, on Facebook, YouTube, please, you can also uh, use the chat and do there to introduce yourself to the church, uh, your name, where you're fellowshipping with us from, and uh, the church will, uh, appropriate person will reach out to you to follow up with you. And I pray as you do so, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, before I go into the special announcements, the media present the other part of the announcements. Happy Sunday and welcome to church. This is Deeper Life Bible Church, Washington, D.C., and we're so glad you fellowshiped with us today. Listen up as we share what we have coming up this week. On Sundays like this, we start with our pre-service prayers at 8.30 a.m., with our service starting promptly at 9 a.m. Still on Sundays, we meet in our house caring fellowship to share in smaller units. Make sure you see one of our ushers or leaders today to get connected to a fellowship unit. The Word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. That's why on Mondays, we have our Bible study at 6.20 p.m. During this time, our founder, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumi, dissects the Word of God for our understanding. We hope to see you there. If you are a senior citizen, I invite you to join us on Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. Thank you. I will see you there. While Jesus was on earth, he said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for such belongs the kingdom of heaven. All children are welcome to the Kids Bible Discussion every Thursday at 6 p.m. No child left behind. Youths, get excited for our weekly fellowship every Thursday by 7 p.m. This is a great space to enjoy good fellowship and grow your relationship with Christ. We hope to see you there, and don't forget to invite your friends. Fridays are a time for our revival service, and as the name suggests, we gather to be revived, encouraged, and equipped in our journey towards heaven. Join us this Friday at 6.20 p.m. A reminder that every third week of the month is our community service week, where we engage our community just like Jesus did. Be sure to be a part of all our community events this month. Offering time, blessing time. Blessing time is offering time. Luke chapter 6, verse 38a tells us, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. If you've brought your tithes and offering, please bring them out now. Father Lord, we thank you, bless your name, for the privilege to give in your presence. And we pray, O oh Lord, that as we give this token to your service, O oh Lord, it shall be used, O oh Lord, to your glory in Jesus' name. And we pray for every process, every pocket that this is coming out from, you bless them abundantly in Jesus' name. And, O oh Lord, those who doesn't have to give today, pray that you provide, O oh Lord, a job that, Lord, will give them the opportunity to give in Jesus' name. I pray that your name be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Uh, now is the time for the special announcement. Uh, before I do that, I want us to get a Bible ready for the Bible reading. So a Bible reading will be taken from the book of Matthew chapter 5. Um, <clears throat> so we can get that ready now. Um, our special announcement, we, this is the week we have been waiting for uh, in regards to the DMV weekend of uh, Reviver Tag Ignite. So I believe we have been you know, doing some prep work, you know, outreach, and inviting our friends and neighbors, our co-workers. Uh, so this week, we are all encouraged on Saturday, which is the um, first day on the 17th, we are encouraged to be here early because, you know, we are the host, you know, so we have to be the first partaker, you know, and uh, the time is 7 p.m. on Saturday. And after service today, there will be uh, outreach. So please, every one of us, we are all encouraged to wait after the service and we are uh, for, for further instructions from our regional uh, uh, pastor. Uh, on Sunday, which is on the, uh, on the 18th, our friends and family day, uh, we are also in, uh, encouraged to be here early on that Sunday. The service starts at 10 a.m. So please, let's all be present, get every uh, thing ready for our guests that are coming. And we all know that our Father in the Lord, Pastor Michael Dada, will be present uh, on that day, I mean, during this week uh, and a weekend event. And we pray that the anointing that he's coming with will flow upon us in Jesus' name. And we, are, we have a guest artist that will be present as well. So let's put all this in prayer and let's make ourselves present as well. And let's, uh, let us be here early. You know. So um, our convention, this uh, a reminder to us that our convention will be coming up on October 17th to 20th. 2024, please let's uh, do the needful, register, you know, uh, early, and, uh, you know, for the hostel, if you're going to use the hostel on that uh, convention, please meet with uh, Pastor Obina, you can call him uh, to help you with the uh, hostel, and also for the hotel, uh, hotel as well, you can reach uh, Obina, so please let's do this as soon as possible because this first come, first help. Um, there's an announcement of uh, lost but found. If you are looking for your $3, you know, uh, it was found outside, you know, by the pastor's uh, uh, lot. So if, you, if you're looking for a $3, you can reach out to the ushers so that they can get to the money. Um, so if there's any other announcement, a pastor will be relating that to us. So now let's go into our Bible reading, Matthew chapter 5. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savour, 
wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come, and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. It hath been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her, that is divorced, committeth adultery. Again ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be, yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, 
Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. The Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Uh, there's uh, one announcement here. The service of song that we're coming up on September 7th, 2024. That will be Saturday. So I believe we all know our pastor, Pastor Chus, Nako, and the, and the family. So they, uh, they are going to be having service of song here. So please let's uh, be present and uh, call them in this time. The Lord will be with their family in Jesus' name.
of the service to another place. But before we make that transition, I would like us to rise up on our feet as we pray for families. But this morning, we spent so much time focusing on families. And if you paid very close attention to what our teachers said earlier, you will decode that there's a contest between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. God our choristers have told that the Bible tells us God is the originator, is the, uh, the founder of marriage. In the beginning, that's why Jesus said in the beginning, he made them what? Male and female. He said, uh, Moses said, Moses commanded us. That was the law, the command of Moses. He said, no, it was because of the hardness of your heart. I said in the beginning. Let's look at that place again before we pray. So we pray with context. We pray with understanding. And as we pray, we're trusting God that the Lord will do something new in Jesus' name. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 
Matthew chapter 5, verse 31. They came to Jesus, tempting him. They said, it had been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. And who said this? It was Moses that said it. It was a command from Moses to the people. But see what Jesus said in verse 32. Read to it. Read. Verse 32. Everybody read with me one, two. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committed adultery. You know, the custom of those days, when people were betrothed in relationship, they were not married yet. They were not consummated yet. They paid the dowry. They've done the right, waiting for the D-Day. They were almost as husbands and wives, like dedicated to that process. But then the Bible, as you look at the custom of this, the Bible says, if it is now discovered that there is a foundational issue, there had been fornication, and you know, marriage is based on sincerity and truth, based on loyalty, sincerity, openness, and transparency. If there's a discovery, that process gets truncated on that basis. And uh, we know in this country, there's a whole lot of contractual stuff. If two people are coming together, we've seen that at, even at times in the church, in the, not this church, but global church, you've heard of things like arranging marriages, people on the basis of falsehood, they say, let's come together and do something so that I can get a paper. Not recognized by God. They are not sincere. They came together for a purpose. We know even as uh, in cases of counseling, the church had prayed with such people and said, well, in the, your blindness, you did all this evil. You agreed to do this because of uh, paper. And you've gotten out of it. The church, there's always mercy. The church comes together and counsels such people to get them out of their stupor and out of darkness. They got into that based on false. Now, in the language of the country, you are a divorcee. When you go into such a thing and say you're no longer interested, you have damaged your record because your record in the country says you have been married, you are divorced. And now you get into it, you want, you're now married, that's another second marriage now for you. The country, and that's falsehood. There's no basis for anybody to get into such an act. It is destructive. And the Bible says, can a man take fire and put in his bosom and not get burned? Very impracticable. Get burned. I pray that, is anybody here contemplating on that? The Lord will deliver you in Jesus' name. As I pray, the Lord will deliver you in Jesus' name. When you look at the law of the country, when you have, you know, some people, you see, boyfriend, girlfriend, they come together and, but the law of the country, when you live with someone for an extensive period of time, the country sees you as married. The person has a right over your inheritance, has a right access. You live together it's under the same house. And you had first year one child, you have a second child, you say you're not married. God says, well, by virtue of this proximity, we see you as husband, cohabitation. It, you have, you like husband and wife. The Lord deliver the church in Jesus' name. And the Lord, in Matthew, let's look at Matthew chapter 19. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished saying, he departed unto Galilee, came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan, and great multitudes followed him and healed, he healed them there. The Pharisees came unto him, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them what? Male and female. Before the law of Moses, before the Ten Commandments was the union of marriage. And so if you're anchoring, if you're anchoring your basis, your anchoring, your argument on the law of America, may you be reminded this morning that before the law of America was the beginning. Now before, and you know, America also anchors its constitution on the Ten Commandments. But the Lord is saying to the people here, even before the Ten Commandments, 
in the beginning. Can I hear say in the beginning was God. And he made them what? He says, in the beginning made them male and female. Before that foundation, you know, that you're resting on, go and look at what the Bible said was the original plan of God. And I pray that we'll go back, we'll have a reset in the name of Jesus Christ. I said we'll have a reset in Jesus' name. Now, the Bible says the foundation be destroyed. What can the righteous do? The righteous can retreat. The righteous can reset. And the righteous can be recovered. What did I say? The righteous can what? Retreat, 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 retreat. And the righteous can do what? Reset. Can you ever say reset this morning? And in the place of mercy, there will be recovery in Jesus' name. You know, as much as we, uh, we talk about this as if it were theory, there are people going through hot. We're going to pray for them this morning. You're going to appear around, you're going to say, God, have mercy. As many as are in this situation, what God has joined together, let no man put us on that. I want you to pray for every, sincerely pray for the nation, pray for families, pray for people who are going through, who are going through challenges, going through challenges. You may not even know that there are cases where people entered unions based on lies and the church had to stick a stand and say, you told a lie. Maybe somebody didn't have a womb. You said you had a womb. You knew you didn't have a womb, but not something you entered covering that up. The church says, no, this is falsehood. The church reversed it and said, this is based on lie. Marriage should be based on truth. I want you to open your mouth and pray and say, God, I want you to pray as many as are going through challenges. Father, we pray that, Lord, you will cause them to retreat. You will cause them to be reset. You will cause them to be recovered in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to open your mouth and pray as many as have been broken in the area of marriage, as many as have received the shot of the enemy, as many as are wounded in the area of marriage. Father, I pray you will cause them to retreat, to be reset, and for recovery in Jesus' name. The marriage is a, it's warfare. It's like you're fighting a battle. Think about a soldier fighting a battle at the forefront and has received a gunshot and has received the arrow of the enemy and can still walk, can still talk, can still operate. Is he going to stay there and allow himself to bleed to death? And if you're a very wise soldier, if you're a very wise man, a woman, you've received a gunshot in the place of battle, you received an arrow of the enemy. What do you do? You retreat for medical attention. You have to go back and get uh, help from your, from your backup. You have to go back. You can't keep fighting because you might bleed to death. You might bleed in that situation and then you lose your life. But if you will retreat, if you will go back, there will be mercy. If you will go back, there will be support. You get sustenance. You, get you will get treatment. You're going to pray as many as have been attacked by the enemy. You're going to pray and say, Father, we ask, oh God, you will cause them to come to their senses and retreat retreat and retreat to a place of support and retreat to a place oh god where they'll be reset and retreat back like jesus said in the beginning we they will retreat back to your word and retreat back to the original plan of god in the name of jesus christ as many as are wounded we pray you will bring healing and cure in the name of jesus as many foundations have been destroyed we know this trans destroyed foundations that impact the nation we're praying that lord you will heal our homes in jesus name we pray and you're getting planning to get married the heart of man only God knows the truth of a man or a woman only God knows you're going to pray as many people are here who are single now planning to get into this relationship you're going to say God guide them into all truth Holy Spirit guide them into all truth that that which must be revealed, that which needs to be known, that which needs to be opened, that law that may impact their union tomorrow, we're going to say, God, open their eyes to it in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray sincerely, pray sincerely, pray honestly. I say, God, open the eyes of the blind, open the eyes as, as many, oh God, as are in this process. And Lord, we're asking you will guide them into all truth that they will not miss the mark in jesus name we're going to finally pray for families that the love of god will speak when love fails the family fails 
You're going to pray, let the love of God speak. In every family, open your mouth and pray. There will be forgiveness. There will be love. There will be perseverance as there is love. There will be compassion. There will be love. Let the love of God speak in our families. Love towards spouse. Love towards children. Why not pray? Pray. Pray. This is the time of prayer. Pray. This is the day of prayer. This is your own time to sow. This is your own time to sow. Sow that prayer. Say, Lord, let the love of Christ reign. Let there be respect and reverence. Let there be love within our homes. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love is kind. Love is gracious. The love within your family will not be replaced by lust. Will not be replaced by the devil's activities. Will not be replaced by counterfeit love. Let there be love, genuine love, as Christ loved the church within our families. That where they are hot, so God, there will be healings. There will be reconciliation. Where, oh God, people have been separated. There are some people enduring their relationship. They live together, but they're enduring. It, they're living together. They don't want to look like they are separated. But spiritually, they're already separated. Spiritually, there's divorce. They are disconnected from one another. We're going to pray that the Holy Ghost will search through the church and bring healing and cure to the church and bring revival to the church in the name of Jesus. We are praying that, Father, you will show mercy. You take wickedness out of our homes and bring the nature of Christ. Every Satan-induced nature, Satan-influenced in nature, walking within our homes, Satan-indoctrinating nature, we pray you take them out, O oh God, and bring the Spirit of God. Let the Spirit of God rule. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Glorify yourself in our families. Bring healing and cure to our families. Cause us to be example of believers in words, in conversation, and even in our families. We're praying that, Lord, there will be a retreat for somebody here. I pray, oh God, there will be a reset for someone here. And that man, that woman will recover all. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please be seated in his presence. Please now give a clap offering to the Lord. Give a clap offering to the Lord. God is doing a new thing. How many of you know God is doing a new thing? This weekend is a week of what? It's a week of revival. What is the theme again, everybody? Are you ready? Don't you never say, please, you can be seated, sir. What's the theme again, everybody? I didn't hear you very well. What is the theme? How many of you are ready for Ignite? If you're ready, wave your hand, wave your hand. Amen. Now, how many of you have invited five people at least? Five people. If you have invited a family of five, it's five people, right? I mean, I have, I think I have that already. What is your name, Sister Lola? A family of four, so it remains one. What's the name of a family of four that you invited? What is your neighbor's name? So how are you praying about that? Oh, God is my neighbor. You're pointing this way. Is it the neighbor? The Lord is asking, is it the neighbor to the left or the neighbor to the right? Oh, God is my neighbor. God bless you. What is your neighbor's name? Oh, Lord, he actually comes to me. I have intervened in their family affair. What is your neighbor's name? It's so still generic. How many people go to God like that? Oh, God bless me. How? Look, if you need a husband, you say, God, give me a husband. That's a blessing. Maybe that husband will bring prosperity. Oh, God bless me. How? <laughs> I need a, and they need the whole world. They're not very non-specific. And God said, when you're ready, let me know what exactly you want. Produce your course. Amen. Who else has the five people already? Who else? Bro, Jerry. What the name? Have you invited five people? This one you're scratching your... <laughs> Not yet. This is a week, few days to the event. Who has invited five people here already? Nobody. Now we see how, why revival gets 
delayed. This is why revival gets what? Delayed. Why? Because the people are not passionate. If I said, if you get five people, you will receive a gift of a million dollars. In fact, before, some people never enter the plane, maybe before they will fly all the way here. I'll be knocked down on the stage. So you see why revival gets what? Delayed. Because it's not a priority for us. It's important to God, but it's not important yet to us. May the Lord have mercy on us. I say, may the Lord have mercy on us. What does it take to invite five people? What does it take? To pray. Now, how many of you received flyers last Sunday? You received flyers last Sunday? Okay. How many of you still have those flyers with you? How many of you still have the flyers with you? Just what we're just doing a little sampling here. How many of you, just raise your hand. Okay, stand up. Let's do this. Stand up. If you still have the flyers with you, you still have some. You still have, even if it's one, you still have the flyer with you. Stand up, please. Stand up. So may I assume that the rest of, of the people don't, of course, they're sincere to me and don't have the flyers Okay, so what this means is after the service today, you want to use up the flyers. You want to use the flyers. And we still have some. We said after service today, we're going to go to our neighborhood. We're going to talk to someone. Don't go and take somebody's, uh, what do you call that? The windscreen, you uh, take the wiper up and put something. You may destroy the wiper. Don't do that. Hand it to somebody. Don't go to somebody's uh, door. You, you do what? You knock. You know the person, you anticipate the person is going to open the door. But before the person showed up, you just do it like that and you ran away because you didn't want to see the person. That's not what I'm talking about. You engage as someone and say, I want to invite you. God is doing something here this weekend. God is visiting us. He's visiting the DMV through this event. You don't want to miss it. I will be there and I want you to be there. How many of you are ready to use up those flyers intentionally? Can you wave your hand? Wave your hand. Good, good. As you do that, the Lord, we still have more flyers at the back. Uh, we actually almost ran out of the flyers, not a lot. The moment you exhaust it, we exhaust the flyers and that's it. So I think we have less than just, I don't think it's even up to uh, 300 anymore. But you want to grab some and say, I'm going to be, I don't want to be a Jonah, disobedient Jonah. I want to be a repentant Jonah. I want to do what God said because you never know. Your blessing at times lie, lies in simple obedience, simple obedience. Naaman was told, go wash yourself in the water X, Y, Z number of times. And he did not reason with that. But the moment he made up his mind to do exactly what was said, the Lord visited him. The Lord will visit us in Jesus' name. After the service today, we're going to wait behind and we'll give us more instructions. Number two, after service, please sit down. God bless you all. Now, after service today also, our brothers especially, our sisters too. So happiness, I'm sure we have some. You look around. We need to uh, make sure this place is ready for people. We're going to bring out more chairs. We're going to, everywhere, chairs going to be parked because this place is going to be loaded this, this weekend. Something will happen here. So we're going to, all the chairs are going to come out. Our sisters can help uh, cobwebbing, whatever you can do, clean up the place in readiness for this. This is your house. This is the house of God, most importantly. So we can't just leave it the way it is. There are vacuums. We vacuum the place. Now, before I close this section, we need people to volunteer uh, for sanitation. Is one area nobody likes to volunteer. If you're here, you can volunteer for sanitation. Can you just raise your hand? to join the DMV sanitation crew. I saw a hand here. Wait, bro, is that, bro, David? Oh, you, young people don't always like to do volunteer for sanitation. If you're here, you can volunteer for sanitation. Can you just raise your hand up? Amen, brother. Jeremiah, please stand up. 
Stand up, stand up, stand up. Praise God. We need more people, more people. Sanitation department, more people. Hey, bro, uh, Paul, if, if you're not busy, I appreciate that. Still stand up, stand up. Just take your musical equipment to the sanitation area. And that place, there will be traffic going there. Amen. I, I like, it's so interesting when you find young people doing the uncommon thing. And God will visit you in an uncommon way in Jesus' name. More people for sanitation. My brother, doctor, ah, please, God bless you. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Amen, amen, amen. Who else, who else, who else? I can only, this is just brothers, brothers only. <laughs> so you don't want brothers knocking on the door when a sister is in the ba bathroom. A sister can easily do that. So where are the sisters now? Sisters. Ah, mama. Wake up. God bless you. 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 Ah, God bless you, mama. Stand up. Uh, Brother Joshua, are you taking their names? Brother Joshua, taking their names? Praise the Lord. We need more people. More people. Sanitation. More people. More people. More people. More people. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. I think this is a good number. Good number. And you're going to be joining... We're going to be holding you accountable for the two days. Um, you don't just run out. You know, after the event, you're going to wait behind. You're going to stay behind and just, you know, and say, well, what needs to be done here before the next day? And after the, the last day, you're going to wait behind. And there will be other people, you know. If others are leaving, you say, I'm not leaving. I'm going to be here. And if they're leaving, you're going to grab them. Hold them. I give you the license to grab and hold back. So you're part of a sanitation team. We're going to get the names together. You're accountable for this. Don't go anywhere. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Security. Can we get people security? Security? Security. You can support in the security. You've got the height. If you've got the height, you've got the height. Someone sees you and say, even if I'm going to break into this, uh, into this car, I am recontemplating that because I don't get a knockout. You got the height. Even if you don't get the height, okay, you don't have the height. You want, you want to volunteer in the security department. We have surveillance systems. There's going to be uh, DC police. Is going to be every, the, you're going to have the uh, uh, metropolitan police on the ground. But we also need our own in-house security. Please just wave your hand. Young man, young man. Oh, Bro Joshua, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Can we get more people? Security, security. We need at least... Ah, Eliot, bro, Eliot, rise up, stand up, stand up, stand up, praise God, praise God. He got a good experience this last weekend, and I think that is resetting him. You will recover all in Jesus' name. Someone came here. I didn't get that. Wow. Come with that stuff. Come with that stuff. Put it here. Someone came last weekend, and uh, we all look at the surveillance camera. I wanted a, a joy ride with our, our church van. Broke in, took the church van and drove it somewhere. And uh, we're gonna look into the security system and see who that person is, whether the person is uh, covered the face and all that stuff. So things go on. But when they see human people, uh, human beings, they, they're deterred. They're deterred. But the police is gonna be here. Like I said, you're not alone. Just surveilling the entire area. Amen. Anybody else for security? Anybody else for security? Security. Okay. 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 Now let's get uh, for finally. Welfare, welfare. You want to walk in the kitchen, help, serving food, tasting the food if it's sweet, okay? I know you like that one. Just don't finish there, what is there? Okay, Sister Phoebe, uh, welfare. Sister Phoebe, any other person, welfare? Welfare, you want to serve in the kitchen. The food's going to be pre-packed. You're going to pack it and it's people. Even, praise God, praise God, praise God. Sister Keziah, Sister Keziah, yes. Amen, sister, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. Any more, any more? No brother for serving food? Huh? No, no, I'm saying, I don't see any brother yet. So, brothers, brothers, you don't have to be a worker, volunteer. You're volunteering for this purpose, just volunteering for this purpose. Any brother who wants to help out with serving food, you want to be like a chef that day, that's a, a good place to be. Food, any brother? Brochimdia, God bless you. Stand up, Brochimdia, stand up, stand up. You're going to represent us very well. Make sure you taste all the food. You have the license, taste all the food. Tell them you got the license. Amen. 
Amen. Praise God. And he likes food. I like that too. Amen. You're blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's rise up on our feet. I told you we just ended phase one, but we're going to release us by 12 by God's grace. Look at phase one. Today, God has prepared his servants. We've heard about families. We've prayed for families. But now we're transitioning to revival mode. The revival will start with us here today. Let's welcome Pastor Tata as he comes forward to give us the word. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Give the Lord, give the Lord, give the Lord a clap offering. Praise the Lord. Ignite. When I say ignite, we repeat. Ignite. Ignite. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the beginning of the revival here now. Father, we pray that you will ignite us before the day, the D-Day, as we are looking forward for the man of God to arrive and have wonderful time with us, two days of revival. Father, begin with us right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ignite. Ignite. It happened. I was just a house fellowship leader somewhere here in America. And um, the pastor called somebody. I mean, somebody went to the pastor. And uh, the person uh, said, Pastor, something happened to me. I fell with somebody in the fellowship. So the pastor said, okay, wait. He called for that person, the person came. And this, the person uh, asked the person, uh, what happened? This person has said about you. He said, Pastor, no, 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 you know me now, Pastor. Pastor asked again. And the person denied three times. He said, wait. He called for the person that came to report. The person came. He said, can you repeat what you, t you told me concerning this young man? And uh, the person said, the person described everything. And after that, the person said, went to the doctor, was test tested HIV positive. That young man that said no, no to the pastor, sweated from the head of the, of the head right down. The, the whole body was with sweat. And uh, he kneeled down, say, Pastor, I'm sorry, Pastor, I'm sorry. Say, go and call your wife. So the wife came. The thing was narrated because I was in the house fellowship where the young man was. I was privileged as a witness. And uh, the wife came. The story was narrated. And said, Sister, the church, as a church, we have the authority to preserve the family. And uh, from now, you are going to live together, but you cannot go to bed together anymore. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All say revival is coming. Revival is coming. That very uh, time, we were giving flyers to go out that our GS was coming to the city. We went out inviting people, inviting people, inviting people, inviting people to cut the long story short. When GS was ministering, without knowing, nobody told him, he said, there's a young man here. He described exactly what happened. And uh, if there are a young man, stand up. And the young man stood up. And uh, to cut the long story short, HIV disappeared. I say what? HIV disappeared. Not only that, he was asked, as usual, go and do medical tests and bring back the result. Did the medical test bring back the result? HIV disappeared. 
Amen? Because I was in house fellowship, I know these things. Do you know after that event now, husband and wife reunited, amen? Ignite! Ignite will bring reunion among husbands and wives, daddy and children, mothers and, and, and the loved ones reunited in Jesus' name. In my house fellowship, that family, after that incident, they have more than two children after that incident because the revival has come. That revival I'm talking about is coming to us in Jesus' name. With a short moment that we have before us, the title is Highlighting the Need for Revival. Highlighting the what? The need for revival. Let's turn our Bibles to uh, Psalm 74. Psalm 74, verse 9. Psalm 74, verse 9. Psalm 74, verse 9. It's time to ignite. It is time to do what? To ignite. Psalm 74, verse number 9. Psalm 74, verse 9. I will start from verse 1. O oh God, why hast thou cast us up forever? Why does thine anger uh, smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? Remember thy congregation, which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed. God will remember his congregation in Jesus' name. Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet. Neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. The cry for revival has been in our hearts. There have been prayers, corporate prayers, personal prayers, but I want, I'm here to assure you that Ignite is next door. Next week like this will be in the second day of Ignite. And we, we, our prayers is that Ignite in DMV, we will not be left behind. Washington Church will not be left behind in Jesus' name. There are instances in the scriptures on revival. Highlight, I'm just going to highlight some instances of revival in the scriptures. We start with this um, man uh, called Nehemiah. Look at Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8, Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah. Let's look at Nehemiah chapter 8. Before we go to chapter 8, look at chapter 1. The word of Nehemiah, the son of Hakila, and it came to pass in the month Chilio, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the palace, that Anani, one of my brethren, came he and certain men of Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. They said unto me, the moment that I left, the remnant that I left of the captivity, there is in the province, are uh, in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. When this report came, Nehemiah decided to go on fasting and prayer. 
And to cut the long story short, seeing the re revival, the, 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 the prayer, pray, revival comes with prayers. It always comes, prayers come before revival. Nehemiah in his time went and started praying, oh, this news, I, can, I, cannot, I cannot bear it. This news, I cannot bear it. This news, I cannot bear it. And guess what? When we get to chapter 8 of Nehemiah, we see that the revival actually failed. Amen? And that ignite will fall in our church in Jesus' name. Chapter 8, and all the people gathered themselves together as what? One man in the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra, the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra, this, the priest, brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until what? Midday. Before the men and the women and all that could understand and the ears of the people were attentive unto the book of the law. We will be attentive to ignite. I will be attentive to ignite. How about you? Are you ready for ignite? Ignite is coming. Let's continue. And Ezra, amen. What did Ezra do? The scripture says that an Ezra, and Ezra was able to read. When, it, when, it, when, it, when the revival started, look at what happened. And Ezra blessed, look at verse 6, and Ezra blessed the Lord. Our man of God is ready to bless the Lord. And the great God and all the people answered, Amen, Amen. With lifting up their hands, they bow their head and worship the Lord with their faces to the ground. The pastor just announced that the music minister will be around. Are you ready for Ignite? The music minister, God will be, the anointing will be so much on that guest minister that the worship will be wonderful. It's another part of the revival. Amen? And also Joshua and Barney and Sherebiah, and Jamin, and Akub. And he just lists all the pastors that were uh, supporting the man of God. They all stood. And the man of God and the Levite caused the people to understand the law. And the people stood in their place. So they read the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to do what? To understand the reading. That is what the Ignite is coming about. They will be a on uncommon understanding of the word in Jesus' name. People were not tired. Can you imagine that? People stood up and the word was explained. A revival that from morning to, to noon, six hours of ministering, nobody was tired. Everybody was in one accord and the ears attentive. I pray that our ears will be attentive as we, we get ready for the revival in Jesus' name. It was not only Nehemiah. Look at in the days of, uh, in the book of Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 34. Second Chronicles chapter 34. Second Chronicles chapter 34. Uh, let's back up to chapter 33. Let's back up to chapter 33. The last verse of chapter 33 of Second Chronicles. 
the last verse, it talks about somebody. Look at 2 Chronicles 33. But the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against King Ammon. And the people of the land met Josiah, his son, king in his state. Who is the father of, the father of Josiah again, church? Who is that? Ammon. Amen? Look at chapter 34 now, verse 1. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign and reign in Jerusalem one and 30 years. 31 years. 31 plus 8 is what? 31 plus 8 church. That means he was 39 years old when he finished reigning. Look at what the Bible says in verse 2. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Amen? We are going to do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. All those uh, uh, flyers that the pastor just mentioned, we are going to go out and distribute the, the, the flyers. When I got my flyers, I drove about 20 miles away from where I used to live. I went to one place, gave the, the talk with them, gave the flyers there, went to another place, talked with them, gave the flyers there. Then, uh, where we are living now, there was somebody that always would ride bicycle around, ride bicycle around. There was a time he almost knocked uh, our car. So, uh, one day he wanted to talk with me. I said, don't worry, I'll talk with you. And uh, the Lord just reminded me that this young man you need to talk with. So I, I slowed down two days ago. I said, please, can you come? He said, yes. What is your name? My name is James. So pastor was asking about, you are invited if you don't know their name. I said, my name is Johnson. So I said, I have something wonderful for you. Can you just wait for a moment? I went into the house. I said, mommy, where are your own flyers? Give me, give me, give me, give me. She gave me the flyers. And uh, I went out. I said, now, I want you to listen. I showed the back of the flyer where there are some youths. It's a, it's a young man. Then the front of the flyer, I said, we have two days of revival. And the first day of the revival is in the evening. The, the second day of the revival is 10 o'clock in the morning. Praise the Lord. Are you, are you ready? Because we will make arrangement to pick you up with your friends. Do you have some friends with you? I say he has two friends. I said, okay, these other two are for your friends. But you, this is your own flyer. Praise the Lord. We spent some time talking and familiarizing ourselves. She, he, he not gained confidence because he was afraid that seeing the incident of almost knocking down our car, that maybe that's why I call him. But we, we, that incident brought us nearer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then when I finished with him, there were some workers that came, you know, to change carpet. Then uh, I knew the language that uh, they would understand me. I just say, pastura, pastura, pastura. I gave, <laughs> I gave them this, the, 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 this thing. They were very happy. I gave another one. They were very happy. But before we know it, all our flyers are gone. I'm ready for another set of flyers because I'm going to do a follow-up. Amen. I say ignite. I'm so happy. I am so excited because something new is about to happen in Washington, D.C. Something new, something wonderful is about to happen. I pray that familiarity will not block us in Jesus' name. You know, it was in 1982 when the Sunday Fellowship just started. And the uh, pastor was just ministering. Pastor was just ministering as usual. But the day that God decided to visit the church, our headquarters church, pastor was talking things that he never, on, he, he himself never planned for it. He said, there's a woman there, there's a woman there. Um, this is what you are trying to do. This is what you are trying to do. This, if you raise up your hand, I will pray for you. That spirit that is disturbing you will get away. And it's just... Spontaneous. It was just spontaneous. 
Something is about to be ignited in our church. I am excited about it. Are you excited about it? Are you excited? Ignite! Look at verse 5. For the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the God of David, his father. And in the twentieth year, he began to purge Judah. We need purge. Turn to the person right and left and say, we need purge before they ignite. We need to purge ourselves. Amen? We need to do what? To purge ourselves. And now look at, the, look at the, the Josiah. Josiah didn't say, my father is Amnon. Amnon did not did well. He died in backsliding state. But Josiah picked up a mentor. Who is your mentor? Turn to the right and say, who is your mentor? You need a mentor for the ignite. Amen? You need what? A mentor for the ignite. Look at that verse. Um, verse uh, look at verse 3. Verse 3 is very, very instructive. It is started by seeking the face of God of David, his father. We have been praying corporate prayer, individual prayer, family prayer. And in the 12th year, he began to purge Judah. 12 plus 8, 20. That means he was 20 years old when he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places and the, and the groups and the calf images and the molten images. They break down the altars of Balin in his presence and images and were on high above them. He cut down and the groups and the carved images and the molten images. He break in pieces and made dust of them and strew it upon the graves of them that had sacrificed unto God, unto their, the idol God. And he burned the bones of the priests upon their altars and cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. So, so he did, so did he in the cities of Manasseh and Ephraim. I, I thank God. When Ignite starts here in our church in Washington, D.C., the communities will hear it. The communities will be affected. And the pastor was giving a testimony, I think it was in Friday Revival Hour, that people were saying that, say, where is, uh, is uh, I need the address. Something just said, I should come to the church. I need your address. I want to come to church. Praise the Lord. You know, when the revival broke out back